nothing but the dog in me. Good evening and welcome to Pound Posse Presents. A little more hijinks going on in the studio than uh, is probably good for us at this point when I'm about to go on the air, but that's all good too. Uh, welcome. Last week again we had no show and uh, that was of course because of the weather. Uh, in a half an hour's time it was on and then off again. Um, you know, checked with the studio, everything was good, it was snowing but it wasn't a big deal. Um, talked to my guest. My truck wasn't running, so Speedo was gracious enough to say he'd come and get me. We were all set, and then it just started snowing like crazy. So my guests, who were coming from a distance, called and said, yeah, I don't think so. Speedo called me and said, uh-uh. So I had no ride, I had no guest, so I had no crew, and I had no show. So here we are now, and um, we'll make up for it. And the guests that I had scheduled for last weekend will be on next weekend, and I look forward to that. And I think you'll enjoy the organization as well. Um, back to my truck. Yeah, last Friday night was uh, kind of a scary ride from running my errands to get home. Um, you know, prayed, prayed to the good Lord above that I would make it home and not blow the thing up, and uh, I did. And I reached out to someone who I had never met in person, uh, only on Facebook and phone calls. And he was gracious enough to say, you know, he'd help me out. And Lewis hooked me up with a young man named PJ, who I have to tell you, PJ, I love you. <laughs> he went through uh, very methodically and professionally and carefully addressed a couple of problems that I wasn't even ma my major concern at that point getting it to run was and he went through everything and he has that truck running like a top so I want to publicly say PJ you are awesome I thank you very much uh, see you again in a couple of weeks because we're gonna work on something else we already talked about it and it was funny because he was fixated on the fact that he said I looked like his aunt and he was trying to find me a picture of her, and so maybe he will by the time next time we meet. But he said he gets the channel, so I don't know. He's probably got more of a life than to sit here and watch me tonight. But I just wanted to say, PJ, again, thank you. You're wonderful, and I will see you soon. Anyway, I saw a post this afternoon that is really disturbing. Uh, you all remember Puppy Doe, uh, the dog that was tortured in Massachusetts and found in the park and there's been a lot of stir and, and there were a lot of beautiful things put together. There's a memorial behind the police station and the park where she was found. There's been uh, you know, a, 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 a blessing site. Um, there were things that people had left for her. There were little memorials. There were you know, all kinds of little things. And apparently the items left at the memorial are all gone mysteriously and uh, you know unceremoniously all gone now the you know the maintenance people all knew about the site and were fine with it uh, the neighbors were okay with having it there uh, one of the neighbors even was taking care of it making sure it was clean and neat and and presentable so you know really it's a disgrace uh, the person or persons who are responsible should be caught and at the very least charged with vandalism because you know, it, it's a sacred site. It's not right. And I have reached out to find out some more. And if I do get more information, I'll be writing it up in my column. But, you know, really, whoever you are, you should truly be ashamed of yourself. You know, there's so much emotion that was involved with the Puppy Doe case, and still is. And to, to totally wipe out a memorial, you've got to be a special kind of heartless, sick individual. I can't even call you a human being. So stay tuned and hopefully we'll find out uh, more about it. I, I don't know that the items will ever be recovered, which is really a heartbreak. There's, it's not as if there's not enough heartbreak with the whole puppy doe case, but to have something like that happen, it, it's just really sad. So keep your eyes peeled if you're up around that area, if you know of anybody who might have done something like that. Uh, report it, you know, call the police, do something, 
as I said, I will, I, I've got, you know, my hands out, re reached out to find out a little more and hopefully, <sighs> hopefully we'll get some resolve. But I really, to think that the things that people left from their heart and with their tears uh, are gone, it, it's just, it's heartless, it's sick, it's not right. <sighs> anyway, I'm going to make a plea for a few animals tonight. I'm going to start with Tazzy. Um, going to have you bring up the picture of Tazzy. There's a couple of them there. And you can flip back and forth between them as I read uh, the Meriden Animal Control plea for Tazzy's life. Uh, they posted, Dear friends, in the almost three-year history of the Mac Pack, we have never made a euthanasia plea for one of our dogs. Sadly, this is happening now. Tazzy is at the end of his emotional, physical rope. He was with Meriden Animal Control looking for a home from June 2013 to January 2014. He then went to Connecticut Humane Society in Newington and was up for adoption there until mid-February. Tazzy bit a beagle and had to be removed from their facility. The Mac Pack then took over again and put him into training and evaluation at John Gagnon's for the last two weeks. This is his second visit. We sent him for training before as well. We hoped he could learn to like dogs, etc. The report back is that Tazzy is in fact dog aggressive and reactive. He will bite when faced with interaction with another animal. No training at this point will change that. Tazzy suffered severe neglect and for more than a year he lived in a basement before he was dumped tied to the door of merit and animal control, his back burned with chemicals down to the bones. Tazzy is very afraid of other dogs and therefore reacts in a way that sets the other dogs off and in turn himself. He cannot live with other animals. No dog parks, no daycare. He has no social experience with other animals. Why is he still alive and why are we fighting for him almost a year later? because he is amazing. Anyone who meets him falls in love with him. He is a Mac favorite. He was a Connecticut Humane Society favorite. They adore him at John Gagnon's too. But he has not been able to find a home because he is not animal friendly. Tazzy is mellow, mild-mannered, obedient, affectionate, super smart, knows all his commands. He is house and crate trained great in the car too. He is fully vetted and healthy. He would be the most amazing companion and buddy to anyone. He is a dog's dog and just wants to be with people. He is loyal and devoted. So many people have fought for him, but we are out of ideas and resources. Tazzy hates the kennel. He jumps nonstop and is destructi destructive to himself in many ways because he cannot take kennel life. He has been bounced around and without stability for the last eight months. After trying everything we can think of to make him adoptable, to find him a home, we know he is tired and frustrated and we will not see him rot in a cage for a family that will never show up. Tazzy is a special, special spirit and he has never had a real home in his almost five years on this earth. I love this dog, but I will not close another cage door on him. I will do the right thing for him, and I will be there till the very end. We are hoping for a miracle. Please share him. For more information, email paw364 at yahoo.com. That's paw364 at yahoo.com. Now, Tazzy is one of those dogs who, unfortunately, cannot live with other animals, as, as they have clearly put out there. Uh, this is not uncommon. This happens. Unfortunately, mostly animal people have animals. There are those few and far between who may have had one and lost the one and can take the one in. This is what Tazzy needs. Tazzy needs someone who's going to understand the fact that he can't be exposed to other animals. You know, too many people 
think they know better and think they're going to take matters into their own hands and not listen to people. And that's not what Tazzy needs. Uh, Tazzy needs a miracle, as, as the Post says. He needs someone who's going to understand him and live with him the way he needs to live. You know, they would not at all be putting on such a campaign for this dog if he wasn't worth it. You know, you, you see into a dog's soul and you see how good an animal is and you really, really, really want the best for him. Taz is going only to have until February 28th, which is only a few more days. It's not a lot of time, but you know, dogs don't necessarily thrive in a kennel environment. Dogs prefer to be with people, with their pack. Um, and for Taz, his pack is truly going to be people. You know, he'd probably be a great family dog as long as everybody was on board and the responsibility of, of keeping him away from other animals. People need to think about what they do when they're doing it. You know, this dog was terribly abused. He was probably, as they say, never had a real home in all of his time on, on Earth. He, he's just self-destructing. He's falling apart in the kennel, and it's not fair to him. You always hope that it doesn't come to that, but some dogs do better than others, and I've said that before, in a kennel environment. Tazzy's not one of them. He's been through a lot in his little life, and he deserves his chance. And obviously, Merit and Animal Control sees that in him, but the fair thing is not to let him sit in that kennel and hurt himself and go crazy and, you know, not have a life. It's not fair to the dog. So, well, I'm sure there would be people who would be upset saying, you know, oh, you know, you're going to put him down and, you know, it's not fair. You do have to think about what's fair to the dog. You could put him, what, in boarding and there'll be other dogs around and that's not going to be cool. Put him in a sanctuary, he's still not going to be in a home. You know, the, you think of, oh, well, there are options. Perhaps and perhaps not. But for this dog to start hurting himself and stressing out and going crazy, you know, he does. He needs a miracle. He needs something to happen really fast. Or he is suffering and it's going to be ended. So if you can do anything to help this boy, uh, if you know of anybody who had one dog and maybe doesn't have that dog anymore because it passed away, if you know anyone who had dogs in the past, if you know any situation that might help this guy, please contact Merit and Animal Control because his time is really, really limited. The 28th is next week. It's only a matter of a few days. And it would be awful to see him not have the chance that he so deserves. Um, the next dogs that I'd like to talk about, and Zach, you can pull that picture up, are Tank and Ivy. Tank and Ivy are a bonded pair. They're both about 10 years old. Tank was found alone, and Ivy was found because there was a call of a dog hit by a train. Thank God Ivy only had bumps and bruises. Uh, apparently they got away from their owner, and the owner did surrender them to Norwich Animal Control, and they're looking for someone who can keep them both together for their last years. They're very, very bonded. I guess when they were reunited, it, the joy in both dogs was just amazing. And of course, it looks like Ivy could stand to lose a little weight, but that's not a hard thing to do when you exercise and feed a dog properly. She may even have some kind of a health issue. I, I don't know. But Norwich Animal Control has them now, uh, walking them together and trying to, you know, keep their, their time together as much as they can. Uh, Norwich Animal Control is reached at 860-887-5747. Again, that's 860-887-5747. And really, y you could say, yeah, I could take one dog, but not two. Believe me, at 10 years old, these guys still have life left, but they're probably in that really wonderful, mellow, much less demanding stage than any younger dog or any puppy. Um, I don't see <laughs> I don't see Ivy as pr pr presenting too much of a problem uh, with her weight, and Tank just looks like a love. So if if you can possibly 
see your way through, even to fostering them until they're, they're, they land in a forever home, they'd probably be a lot more comfortable than they are in a kennel right now. So do consider them. They look like a sweet, sweet couple, and they really are bonded. I always say, what's one more mouth to feed? You know, you, you take one, you take two, it's not the end of the world. And there are plenty of people out there who might resist, but could be the perfect solution for these guys. They look like best pals. Yeah, they do. They look like best pals, is what Speedo just said. And they glow when they're together. It's amazing. Uh, the next ones that I want to pull up are some cats. We've got Molly and Little. Uh, Molly is seven, Little is five. They've been through a lot of life events together and would like to stay together. They're both playful and loving, and they would love a forever home to snuggle in and call their own. They're actually very, very sweet cats from what I understand. And, you know, again, what's one more mouth to feed? You take one, you can take two, and, and, and make both of their forevers a, a wonderful thing. There's another cat, and I'm an idiot because apparently I didn't download the picture, so Zach, I will take the, the camera back and pay the piper. His name is Sir. He's a really handsome guy. He's a black and white cat, and he loves everyone and everything, cats, dogs, adults, children, men, women. Uh, he's a real lover. He's about three or four years old, and he would make anyone uh, a marvelous addition to their household. The cats are available through Foster and Forever Pet Rescue, and their number is 203 two three two five seven zero three once again that's two zero three two three two five seven zero three and you know I say all the time that you really should consider opening up your home to be a foster home because it really does save lives Zach can we get that picture up there's a lot of reasons to foster and you know you may think that you don't have room for a foster dog well when the shelter gets full they're going to kill to make space if you think it's sad to say goodbye and your heart's going to be broken because you fostered a dog and you can't keep it and you're attached i think it's much sadder to see them die if going to the shelter upsets you imagine living there waiting for help that never comes and then you die so really, fostering saves lives. You know, there have been a lot of urgent dogs lately. There have been tight races against time. And if you're set up to be able to foster and you aren't, really, after reading this, ask yourself why. Why aren't you helping out? Why aren't you doing the most that you could do when these animals really need you? It's a sad, sad situation to think that if more people would open up their homes and suck it up and take the heartbreak and take the, the temporary inconvenience to foster an animal and save a life, more people could do it, more, pe more animals could get saved. You know, what selfish part of you isn't, isn't going for it, isn't helping? It is the ultimate sacrifice sometimes to have to rearrange your schedule, rearrange your life, taking another dog, taking another cat. Yeah, it's not convenient. Anybody who fosters will tell you that. It can be a real pain. But you know something? You're saving a life. And if you're frustrated because, you know, you've got one more to take care of, imagine the alternative is that animal's going to die in a shelter. Really, if you're, if you're able to, ask yourself why you're not. Go through the checklist in your head and try to bring yourself around to getting on board and at least trying it. You know, do it through a rescue. If you need to be connected with a rescue who's looking for fosters, first of all, you can find tons of them on Facebook. And, you know, as I've said, not every rescue is created equal. Uh, if you need a little bit of guidance in trying to get hooked up with a reputable rescue who, you know, is on the right path to, to really helping the animals, you can feel free to contact me because I know plenty of rescues who would embrace you with open arms. And you can email me at pawprints713 at AOL.com. That's P-A-W-P-R-I-N-T-S 713 at AOL.com. I'd be more than happy to hook you up with a rescue 
who could really, really use you and your help because it, there's just a shortage everywhere of foster homes. All right, Zach, I will take the camera back for a moment and then we're going to put up another picture, but, you know, I'm just going to drive you crazy tonight because I can. Uh, there's a really, really cool idea for kids 16 and under. You know, <sighs> puppy mills are no joke. Puppy mills are something that so many of us are so against. And, you know, if you do the research, you should be on board with it, too. You know, the animals are kept in horrendous, horrendous conditions. They're not treated like pets. They're not even treated with any regard at all. And, you know, once their breeding years are over, they are unceremoniously auctioned off to the highest bidder for a continued life of neglect and abuse or unceremoniously killed in any one of a horrible bunch of fashions that you don't even want to imagine, and it's legal for them to do. So there's this really neat little dog named Harley who is a puppy mill survivor himself. He spent 10 years in a cage, lost an eye in the process, and he's very much involved with saving others like him. Uh, let's get a picture of Harley, Zach. You can check out his page. It's actually called Harley, and this is our little guy. He's, like I said, very, very involved with his buddy, Teddy, and he, he does a great, great job of going out there and, and spreading the word about puppy mills. Uh, I will let you put up the picture of the PSA, the puppy mill PSA picture, Zach, and I will read for you Harley's great idea. His post is, I've got an idea, but I'll need the help of all of my young friends. I'm asking for a hand-drawn anti-puppy mill picture, such as this one, to be included in a video public service announcement called Kids Educating Kids About Puppy Mills. I hope all the moms, dads, grandparents, aunts, uncles, and even teachers will encourage the youngsters in their lives to participate in my project. All pictures must be made by youth ages 16 years and younger. Included with the picture, but not on the picture, should be your name and age, plus a sentence or two telling me about your picture. I'll also need your mailing address so I can send you a magazine with an article about me and a photographed photo. Pictures can be mailed to me at Harley Taylor, P.O. Box 64, B-E-R-T-H-O-U-D, Colorado, 80513. Once again, that's Harley Taylor, P.O. Box 64, B-E-R-T-H-O-U-D, Colorado, 80513. Or pictures can be sent by email, must be high quality, large resolution, to Rudy, R-U-D-I, at milldogrescue.org. That's R U D I at milldogrescue.org. The deadline for sending pictures is March 15th. Please be colorful and creative and not too scary. Thank you. Love, Harley. Now, I'll take the camera back. And, you know, teaching our kids how to build the world when we're gone by being kind to animals, being kind to others, and having an awareness is really the way to go. Kids are never too young to know that they shouldn't mistreat an animal. Kids are, you know, maybe there's a certain age where the whole puppy mill horror thing is a little too much for them, but you can not sugarcoat it, but work around the edges of it and still encourage them to enter this contest and have their picture included and get them on the path to learning about uh, what happens in the real world and how they can change the lives of animals. So I think that's a really cool idea. And, you know, that, that whole campaign is posted on Harley's Facebook page and it's also on the Pal and Posse Presents Facebook page. So, you know, check it out. Encourage your kids to get involved and help change the world because, you know, folks, People like you and me aren't going to last forever, and someone's got to take up the torch and do the right thing. Uh, good news, Andra Grace, if you remember, the pit bull that was dragged behind the pickup truck and suffered horrendous uh, injuries, has been adopted. 
She is on her way to Florida as we speak. Her new parents flew up and they are driving back with her. So there's plenty of pictures on that page, Justice for Andrew Grace, the pit bull dragged by pickup truck. You can check it out on there, but congratulations and happy life, little Andra Grace. Um, last little piece of news, if you remember when Juno was here, uh, she talked about entering the American Humane Association Hero Dog Awards. She is in the Emerging Hero category. She did throw her little hat in the ring. So we're gonna wish her the best of luck. Voting starts on March 7th. I have Speedo smiling at me. I love the dog, I can't help it. So on March 7th, the voting will open up and I will be relentless in asking for everyone's votes for Juno because I think she's fabulous. Yep, there we go, bring that up, Zach. And here is Juno's post. And like I said, we will definitely be looking for votes to help Juno because, you know, she is an amazing little dog. And if you haven't checked out Juno's place, you really should on Facebook. She is a little hero in the making for sure. And hopefully one day we can have her back on the show because she was a lot of fun. And her Facebook page is now over 100,000 likes, which is just incredible because when I booked her on the show in January, she had 75,000. So she's a little rock star. And if you're not following her, you should be. And I will take the camera back because I think we're pretty much at that point. Okay, we've got about a minute. So we've covered a lot tonight. We've been all over in lots of different directions. Uh, people get involved, do the best you can to open up your, your eyes, open up your hearts, do what you can to help these animals in shelters. They really need you. If you can foster, save a life. You know, there's plenty of dogs that need you. There's plenty of cats that need you. They can do a whole lot better than be in a cage or in a kennel at a shelter if you open up your home. Uh, fostering is the way to go. You know, we've got Tazzy who is super, super urgent. He's got to find just the right place. Tank and Ivy would love to stay together. You know, you've got Molly and Little and Sir who are looking for forever homes. They are in fosters now. And, you know, you've got a way to help kids learn to help make the world better by getting involved in that campaign for mill dogs. Anyway, here we are with the credits. I'm gonna say peace, love, and dogs, and good night until next week. Stay safe in all this crazy weather. <laughs>